Hello booktube, Alan here. Welcome to my channel. I'm in Moultrie, Georgia, and it's a balmy, mm, I think it's 63. Nice weather. But I'm coming to you today to talk about Thomas Pynchon, Against the Day. <clears throat> Pardon me. I started this book last month, and I was hoping to get through it in a month. I had a timetable and everything, but I uh, have not. But I've been pushing away at it. I, I'm about one third of the way through, and it's a it's a great book. I I can't compare it to Gravity's Rainbow, and I can't say I like it better than Gravity's Rainbow, but I am enjoy thoroughly enjoying it. It's very funny, I'm lear learning a lot. A cast of characters in in the hundreds, but. Let me just talk about it so far. I'm up to page 307. About another 100 pages, I'll be in part three, the by locations. And it starts off with this group of guys called the Chums of Chance. And they're on a, a Zeppelin, an air balloon, but it's the size of a, a small aircraft carrier. And it, the book takes place in the eight, turn of the century, uh, late 1800s, and specifically at the uh, World's Fair in Chicago. That's where it begins. But uh, this, these guys are chums of chance, and there's a commanding officer and a whole list of crew members and even a talking dog. Well, actually, he doesn't talk. He doesn't speak. He communicates, and he, he also reads. There is a, a talking uh, thunderbolt, <laughs> lightning this book is the physics and science in this book is just like you'd expect from Pynchon and it has to do with light and lightning and alchemy and turning silver into gold because it's juxtaposed with the chums of chance and all their adventures and they do go on adventures and they've been around for a while in fact there's uh, books about them like chums of chance go to Italy or Chums of Chance, kind of like the Hardy Boys, or something like that. But it's it's uh, also in the, this huge story is a Wild West tale. And that's out in Colorado, like, like Telluride and Denver and all over places like that, where they're mining for using dynamite and nitroglycerin. And there's a character in here who's uh, getting addicted to the natural glycerin and he's having not hallucinations I mean it's beyond that he's going into another world and his body is changing and things like that uh, the names are uh, almost laugh out loud there's uh, two brothers named Frank and Reef Reef is short for reefer and there's uh, some marijuana smoking in here and also some tarot and Kabbalah just like there was in um, Gravity's Rainbow, but there's a lot more tarot in this and fortune telling and things like that, which I really enjoy. Now, um, there's also a detective story in here. There's an actual detective agency and a, uh, a PI office, and there's a lot of uh, conspiracy involved with that and paranoia and what you'd expect in a Pinchon novel. This will be the uh, the fourth one I've read, fourth or fifth, probably the fifth. I've, I've read uh, Gravity's Rainbow, I've read Vineland, I've read um, uh, uh, Vice, I was going to say Incoherent Vice, but I forget, the name slips me right now, uh, and I really enjoy my pension. Oh, there's also uh, real-life characters in here, like Thomas Edison, Tesla, uh, Madame Blavatsky, Helena Blavatsky of the uh, Theosophical Society, if anybody's familiar with her. It's just a wealth of um, information and storytelling. And I was hoping to do, uh, people would uh, jump, jump on board, I did a search, and also Brian at uh, Bookish turned me on to a, a, this uh, duo 
uh, and I subscribe to their channel. I've been remiss in uh, my booktube lately. That's, that's very true. I'm trying to catch up with that. But they are doing videos on Against the Day as well. So I'm, I might try to reach out to them today. Because just for example, uh, an example of the alchemy in the book, I'm going to read, read some and uh, maybe I'll show it to you. There is, back in New York, said Merle, a certain Dr. Stephen Emmons, dismissed by many as a crackpot, but don't you be fooled, for he's a real article. What he does is, he'll take some silver, just the smallest trace of gold in it, and start to pound on it at very low temperature, running a bath of liquid carbonic to keep it cold. Keep pounding into it, pounding all day and night, till little by little the gold content, some strange and unknown way, begins to increase. At least up and over to the point 300, sometimes even gone as high as 997. Unknown way. This is how confidence operators talk. All right, not unknown to me. I just don't like to spook people if I, if I don't have to. You've heard of transmutation. Heard of. All it could be. The silver gets transmuted to gold. And spare me that face. Dr. Emmons calls the stuff agitermitarium. Merle bought out an egg-sized nugget. This is the stuff itself. Argentarium. About 55-50-50 mix. And this. And to the other hand, spraying a blurry crystal about the size of a pocket Bible, but thin as a NIF's mirror. This is calcite. Known in this particular format as some of the of the visiting labor sh shikenplath. Huh? Okay, okay, so you get the idea. It's, uh, and I hope I didn't have my hand over my phone when I was reading that. So against the day, yes, 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 I highly recommend it. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself, and I will get back to you all later. Later.